I just wanted to take a moment and show you the elephant ears, which are doing phenomenally since I brought them inside. I really think, you know, anybody that's considering growing elephant ears, they've got to be one of the easiest plants to grow. Basically, just water the bejesus out of them and you're going to do fine. This is where I would have cut a leaf, and then this is the new leaf growing. So all the stubs that I created, see here, there's a new leaf coming, and then here's a stub as well. They're gonna grow out of that perfectly fine. It looks like the impatient plants have actually died off, but what's happened is, is because they had so many seeds, these are all impatient seedlings growing in the pot. The Farfugium is doing great. Notice how I said that without hesitating. Farfugium japonicum giganteum. Well, hello everybody. Today is December 23rd. And this video is probably going to come out on December 24th. So I just want to take a minute and wish you a very happy Christmas Eve and happy holidays if you don't celebrate Christmas. Uh, just a few things I want to go over today, so let's get into it. My wood supply this year has been absolutely horrible. And what I've been burning is the wood that's underneath this tarp. This is all the wood that's going to be burned next. It's seasoned, however, it's not dry. I had a whole bunch of longer branches over here. I cleaned them up, put the small ones on the pile, and I've got a few to split over here. I cut all this pile here with my Husqvarna battery chainsaw. There's a video that I'm gonna publish on Christmas day at three o'clock. It's gonna be between four and five minutes long. And basically I'm gonna take you from taking the saw to the shed, you know, doing a quick filing on it and then cutting the wood. It just amazes me how far chainsaws have come and how a 10 pound battery powered chainsaw can cut logs. Like you see how big this one is here? That's probably six or seven inches in diameter. And it cut through that like butter. It's probably about as big as I'd cut with a battery powered saw right now. But each generation, they're gonna keep getting better. So that brings us to the ax here. And what I'm trying to do is, uh, somebody's telling me to feed him. You hear that? I think that's a tufted titmouse. And there's a chickadee, chickadee and a tufted titmouse up there. I've ended up spending quite a bit of time editing footage and sitting down and, and not getting out, which is really no good for my mental attitude. But you know, I'm also slowly falling out of shape. And so I vowed to just try to get out every day, you know, even if it's a lousy day and just do something in the yard. And that was the beautiful thing years ago when I had all those logs is I could just come out and split some wood. Back then I was trying to split for speed. And I, I think the secret to life is not to do things to get them done quickly, but just to do something to, to enjoy them. I believe that's being in the moment. Last night I dug my ax out of my dump truck, put a coat of boiled linseed oil on the handle, and then I just cleaned up the, the rust. Later today I'll be taking the ax and I've been saving, you know, some nicer ones. This is the perfect size. If you're gonna hand split wood, these are the sizes you want. If it's got, you know, a large knot that eventually you learn what you can split and what you can't split, Anything with a large knot or basically the, the three strike rules, if it doesn't split in three strikes, you put it aside. You'll either use a chainsaw to noodle it, which is cutting lengthwise, or I will put it on the log splitter here. I use this little M12 battery powered die grinder by Milwaukee. When I got tinnitus, I got this because I thought it would be quieter. This is a really nice tool to have if you use these 3M roll locks. The M12, you can only use a two inch roll lock disc. A three inch, it works, but it can get bogged down. So just go with the twos. But this is just a coarse scotch bright pad. It cleaned the head of this ax head like nobody's business. Normally I don't bother polishing the heads on my axes and a splitting ax doesn't have to be as sharp as this one is. Every once in a while I just like to spend a little bit of time and give them some love. It's just about centering, being in the moment. The Dodge is down again. I lost the rear brake line. Hopefully you guys are seeing I got a piece of cardboard under there in a container. If you look right in the center there, that is where the brake line from the front to the rear connects with the rubber hose down to the axle. That's the second line I've had in this truck to get to the rear. And unfortunately, it, it wasn't the rubber line that broke the hard line. So I'm basically gonna have to run a new line from the front to the back. Obviously, I wouldn't do that without replacing the rubber line as well. 
which then leads to that bracket that looks incredibly rusted. Yesterday, I came out and removed the fender liner under here. That is where that line starts. And the last guys that did it, you know, the fuel tank's in the way, so they didn't remove the tank and follow the, the course, which probably would have cost them two or three hours easily. Right now, I'm debating whether I want to remove the fuel tank and, and you know, route the line the right way. And, you know, unfortunately, by the time I do that, I'm then looking at the condition of my frame, which may be very difficult to look at. Long story short, yeah, I could probably just get in there and replace the line that's in there you know, get her done. I think I really want to address any issues I find and with a truck that's 20 years old, you're going to find issues as the project goes. It doesn't owe me anything. It's more of a hobby. This was my dream truck in my 20s. I just don't want to say goodbye to my my dreams in my 20s. Because I'm trying to film today, I'm holding off on feeding the birds and they have been hovering and chirping and trying to figure out what's going on here. So pretty soon, pretty soon guys. I went to the grocery store and this tree was on sale. I think it was like 15 bucks and I thought it would be beautiful out here. So I bought this about five days ago, came home in the dark, set it up out here, ran extension cord, plugged the lights in and I, I'm out of timers. So I've just left the Christmas tree on for the last um, five or six days, but Again, we're looking out the kitchen window. I think it adds a nice touch. See the raven up there? They all know I'm here. They're like, where's the food, dude? Where's the food? December 23rd, flowering cabbage is still looking perfectly fine. There is definitely frost. That ground is hard. I'm liking the red better than the white but I think you need to add a few white ones in there just for a little bit of contrast. I got a small woodpecker on the suet there. And then I got the big woodpecker making a racket, looking for some food. Well, folks, that's gonna do it for this one. I just thought I'd give a quick update, let you know about a few things going on around here. I hope everything's been going great for you with your holiday shopping. And if I don't see you before uh, Christmas, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and uh, Happy New Year as well. We'll see you soon, folks. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.